Wins. Oh, Wins. I guess would have meant something. Joel. You know, like my favorite uncle used to say, a samurai knows how to apply the right amount of force. Too little, and you lose respect. Too much, and you lose opportunity. What is up, button mashers, min maxers, speed burners, and rage quitters? This is Biba Reyes. Welcome to Unblockable, the best new video game show featuring a guy filming alone in his bedroom. Before the PS5 launches in a matter of days, allow us to give its older brother, the PS4, its flowers. The PS4 was released back in 2013. It has three versions, the standard, slim, and pro versions, and it has sold 112 million units worldwide, making it the fourth best-selling video game console to date. Today, we are talking about two PlayStation exclusive titles that are sure to be shoo-ins as nominations for Game of the Year in 2020, Ghost of Tsushima and The Last of Us 2. Ghost of Tsushima is the very last PlayStation exclusive for this generation, and it is the fourth original IP developed by Sucker Punch Productions, which is owned by Sony Interactive Entertainment itself. People were so excited to play as the samurai turned ninja Jin Sakai that in its first three days of sales, Ghost of Tsushima sold over 2.4 million copies worldwide, making it the PlayStation 4's fastest selling first party original IP debut, meaning not a sequel nor based on any pre existing franchises. Of course, the West wouldn't have its fascination with Japan's traditional noble warrior class if it weren't for one Akira Kurosawa, whose timeless classic films such as Rashomon, The Hidden Fortress, and of course, Seven Samurai clearly serve as inspiration for the game. Ghost of Shima even features a Kurosawa mode, which lets you put a 1950s black and white film style filter over the game, making you feel as if you were playing as the eponymous Yojimbo himself. Also, a bit of trivia for One Piece fans, in the game's Japanese dub, main protagonist Jin Sakai is played by none other than Zoro voice actor Kazuya Nakai. The Last of Us 2 is the sequel to Naughty Dog's smash hit 2013 release, where players take control of Log- I mean, uh, Hugh Jack- uh, I mean, uh, uh, Joel, uh, on a trek across America as he fights tooth and nail to protect X-23- uh, I mean, Ellen- P I, I mean, Ellie- from the post-apocalyptic zombie hordes as well as humans themselves, whom as we all know, in a post-apocalyptic setting, aren't the nicest bunch of people. Never want to shy away from very real and gritty depictions of violence and other mature content The Last of Us 2 has been banned in China as well as some parts of the Middle East and Africa, due in large part to the LGBT themes tackled by its story. Main protagonist Ellie, of course, being revealed as a lesbian in downloadable content for the first game, as well as many other parts of the new game story. The Last of Us 2 also features a few sex scenes which were deleted for the Japanese release. It's 2020, guys. Let's... let's be better. Failing to be better, Nefarious Parties leaked major details about the game over a month prior to its release amid massive amounts of hype. 4chan, Reddit, and YouTube posts containing huge spoilers for the game's story, as well as confidential gameplay footage, flooded the interwebs, and the reaction to the contents of said leaks were... Cool, calm, and collected, of course, as we all know that gamers are the most reasonable, rational, and forgiving people around. Despite such efforts to stymie its release, The Last of Us 4 nonetheless sold over 4 million copies in its first three days of release, making it the PlayStation 4's fastest selling exclusive to date. Way to go out on a bang, PS4. Alright, so as we give the PlayStation 4 such a beloved, such a genre-defining console, the send-off that it deserves, here to talk about those two games that we mentioned are two of my absolute closest friends. I love these guys, which is why this episode of Unblockable is maybe going to be a little more casual, a little different, because uh, these are people who, with whom I work, um, are my friends, and they just so happen, we, we just so happen to have a lot of common interests and one of those interests happens to be 
gaming. And uh, so I'm gonna introduce first, she is an amazing theater actress, an amazing singer, an all-around performer, an all-around artist. She is a toy collector. She also customizes toys. She, she creates a lot of amazing custom Funko Pops. We should ask her about that later. Let's welcome Tanya Manalang. Hey guys! Hello! <laughs> Thanks for having hey, me. Hey Vibes! How are you? I'm good, I'm good! How I'm, are you? I'm actually like really excited to do this. Um, I, mm. I've been playing this game for a while. It took me a long time to like get through this game. But it was, you'll you've see actually, what I have to say. Actually, you've actually been streaming this game, Yes, right? I have. Which is, I something, have. which is something you've been getting into a lot lately mm -hmm. is, is streaming games, which is really, really cool. Um, I couldn't. I've actually I've played this game as well. You, you're here to talk about Ghost of Tsushima, right? Uh, the basically the last PlayStation exclusive uh, mm -hmm. AAA title, right, from Sony. Right. And I've played this game as well. I can't imagine um, what the the balancing act of playing this game, which which can be very challenging at some points, and streaming and, it at um, the same time, and streaming yes. it at the same time. Um, talking to your mm. to your to your followers, uh, engaging in the chat. So. Right, it's really it was really hard. I have to admit, it was really hard. There were times when I I had to play the game again, like the the, the a certain part again, because I wasn't really paying attention. Because like the my the the people in my chat were going crazy. So and talking about something <laughs> completely different. But you know, you, you know, gotta ride that, with that. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> something that I I of course of course I've since I've gotten back into games recently, which is something I tend to do at the end of a console generation cycle. Um, I just I just hoard all of the games that I missed out on in the last couple of years. I've, of course, I've thought about streaming as well, but I just can't. Game, uh, playing a game, especially a single player game feel, is such a solitary, like, me time kind of experience for me. So I'm, I'm, I can't wait to hear what your experience of Ghost of Tsushima was, streaming it along with a lot of other people. Okay, so here to talk about Ghost of Tsushima is Tanya. Thank you so much for joining us. And our next guest is another really, really great friend of mine. We've been friends for more than a decade at this point. There's, there's very few things that we don't share, really. This guy is, is, is honestly a brother to me. We've, if, 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 if I actually had a brother, I, I, think our relationship would be similar to my relationship with this guy. He is, again, an amazing actor uh, and an, an all-around performer. Uh, he, he's, he's, he's kind of a renaissance man, really. There's nothing this guy can't do. And like, like Tanya, who happens to be his girlfriend, <laughs> uh, they, he's also gotten into streaming lately on Twitch, streaming video games, streaming first-person shooters, multiplayer online games, and streaming the other game that we're gonna, gonna be talking about today, which is The Last of Us 2. Welcome, Rebatadero. Oh, almost didn't see you there. Hey, <laughs> how are you? What's up, it's, my man, how are you? What's up, Bebo, how are you, buddy? You yeah, know, I, I love good, that man. you I'm talked good. about our friendship and it's like a brotherhood. You can almost say mm -hmm. that our friendship is Unblockable. I knew it. I knew it was coming. <laughs> That's one. Can we put a? Can we put a like a pun counter for this guy? Oh no! Up on screen. Just put oh a, no! Ping, okay. One I, there. I have a reputation <laughs> to uphold. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to talk about this. Yes, game. sir. Yes, sir. So, yes. so, I, I, you, 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 you actually introduced me to a lot of games. You intro You got me into NBA basketball by getting me to play 2K. 2K. <sighs> Can yeah, I believe man. it was. I, I, we played 2K. 2K12, I think. I think 2K12 was the first one we played. The one with Michael Jordan on the cover. No, no, no. It, it was 10. It, it was Kobe on the cover. Kobe, 10, 10. 2K10. 2, 2K10. 2K yeah. 2K yeah, 2K yeah, it was Kobe on the cover. Yeah. Oh my and, God. And um, yeah. I was honestly really, really stoked to see that you were, you were starting a, a Twitch channel, that you were streaming games because. Um, I know how into video games you are. Rock band. I remember when <laughs> Rock band exactly. Yeah, I remember yeah. when we when we downloaded the Queen Pack. Queen of rock Pack, band. yeah, oh, dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so we could five star all of the songs because <laughs> we were so you, you got me into Queen and we were so into Queen at that yeah, time. Yeah, dude. Yeah, man. So I you're probably the person it. I've I've played video games with the most. Um, and and when I think about like someone who would play a video game while engaging people at the same time. You, you, you fit that perfectly, man. So I'm so happy <laughs> to know that you're streaming video games. In contrast to your like bright, lively personality, you're streaming a very 
a considerably oh, grim yeah. and considerably um, dark video game in The Last of Us 2. <laughs> Oh dear lord, yeah. Oh my god. I can't tell you how many times I actually freaked out and cried on stream. So, <laughs> you know, I, I'm also a very emotionally charged person, you know that? And yeah. I, I get emotional very easily and I have proof mm. that I ended up crying <laughs> on stream. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> So, Reb, Tanya, thank you so much for joining us. I'm very excited to hear about your thoughts on these two amazing games, really. I, I, like I mentioned, I've played Ghost of Tsushima. I'm going to probably probably play it another time because I just love it that much. I, I really like The Last of Us 1. I played The Last of Us, the first one. I haven't played The Last of Us 2. I, I'm, not, I'm not as interested in shooters uh, these days as I, as I used to be. But I did look up the story, which is... Um, which is why guys like you do what you do. It's, it's to let people who aren't necessarily playing the game experience it, right? So I watched a couple um, playthroughs of The Last of Us 2. And I, and I got caught up on the story because uh, as much as I wasn't that interested in playing The Last of Us 2, I was very much interested in the story still. And when it comes to these AAA, big-time, exclusive titles, they don't necessarily have to be exclusive, but the titles we're talking about are exclusive titles to, to the PlayStation console. One of the main draws for people and one of the main priorities for a development team is the story. The journey that they take the player through. Things like things like God of War, um, things like Final Fantasy. The, uh, um, the, 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 there's such a premium and such an emphasis on storytelling for these for these AAA titles. And these two uh, games that we're gonna talk about, um, I feel like are really good examples of that in their own ways, right? And so with that, uh, let's start with Tanya. Can you let us know what it is about the story of Ghost of Tsushima that you particularly enjoy and what about it made you wanna stream the game for people? Actually, it really all boiled down to the fact that I love Japan. I said, I love okay. Japan. So, you know, without really knowing what the game it was about exactly, except for the fact, you know, it was about samurai and stuff like that, and it was set in, the, in that period, I, wa I knew I wanted to play, to play it. Because number one, it was open world, which is like my favorite genre of uh, games. And it was set in Japan. That's definitely a reason why I, I wanted to stream it, I wanted to play it, and... As soon as I saw it in in the store, I had to get a copy of it. That's awesome. So I I, I know that both of you are very much into Japan and, and a lot of different Asian cultures. Right. And that's yeah. honestly, unabashedly a draw for people when it comes to Ghost of Tsushima. Right. Um. What is it about? Without getting into spoilers, what is it about Jin's journey and his story that you feel, um, is a credit to Ghost of Tsushima? It's really all about honor, right? Yes, and, okay, and yeah. You're really forced to make certain decisions. Nah. It's so hard to like go through with this without <laughs> saying any spoilers. Well, well okay. <laughs> um something that isn't isn't a secret naman is that uh Jin is 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 He samurai, becomes a ghost. Right? So yes, he, yes. It, yes, yes. And it, it's about his transition from uh from samurai uh, honorable samurai to becoming yes, the ghost. To becoming of the ghost, yes. right? And and yes. uh, they don't say it explicitly in the game that that's not a spoiler. They they never say it explicitly in the game. But mm -hmm. he essentially becomes a ninja, right? Yes, yes, and, exactly. Um histor historical accounts vary as to as to the origins of ninja and what their what their existence actually was, but this game offers like a, an artistic like glimpse as to what that what that might be. And do you feel like, as as the player, you were put into that position and you felt that sort of like people people just have more of a historical grasp on samurai culture than ninja, right? You, there's a samurai museum in in in. Shinjuku in Japan. Yes, yes. I don't and think and honestly, there's museum. like more uh, accurate movies when it comes to samurai mm -hmm. and the telling of their stories as opposed to ninjas, with which you know is more like a myth to, to most people compared to samurais. And um, in terms of like a transition, I was introduced pretty much into that uh, ninja phase early on in the game, so. I just wanted to get into it already. <laughs> I wanted to be the, the ghost already, and 
Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a it's a great game. Thanks, Tang. Okay, so uh, Reb, what is it about the the narrative? And, and we're talking about narrative in games, right? One developer, one company sort of springs to mind immediately, and that's Naughty Dog. They're the developers of The Last of Us, um, games like Uncharted, Crash Bandicoot, also. But what what is it about about the the story of The Last of Us that ha- you feel that has gripped you enough to to decide you wanted to stream the, your your playthrough of the game and uh, has gripped so many players and and has has made it such a such a like such an iconic uh, video game for a lot of people. Uh, you know, I have the advantage of of playing The Last of Us Two from the standpoint of having played the first game. Uh, so I have the first game as my uh, as an investment, I suppose. Just playing this game from the perspective of of somebody who who has lost uh, you know the world around her, and it also spoke to me as an actor, you know, because I I, I just love the storytelling of the Last of Us, like the first game. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love the story of the first game. And then they follow it up with this particular title and, and you're already invested in the particular characters in the first game. And then they make you invest even more in the second game. So it's the for me, it's, it's really, I, I want to know what happens to, to Ellie. I want to know what happens to Joel. I want to know what happens to these characters that I've fallen in love with, that I have rooted for amidst all the bad decisions, amidst all the good decisions that they've made in the past franchise, uh, the, the, the past installment of the game. And, you know, it, it, it's that, that, that same drama that I want to share with audien- the, the audience. You know, that, that level of investment I have, I want them to know why I'm so invested in these characters. Mm-hmm. And I had a lot of audience members who didn't even see the first one, who have never even touched the PlayStation. And they were watching it and they were in it for the story 100%. And, you know, that's what's so great about The Last of Us. You know, it's just a, a lot of people have said it, that it's the greatest movie that is not a movie. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yet, yet. I, and, I honestly you know, feel like the whatever they're creating, if it's a movie or a series or whatever, it's like, I already. I mean, what what are you gonna do? Like the game has you beat because you actually get oh, to yeah. experience yeah. it, and because the the performances are already so amazing. Have oh, you yeah. seen that video from the first one? Mm-hmm. Where well, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm making an executive decision. Uh, spoilers for the first Last of Us are completely, completely fine because we're talking about the sequel. That's seven um, years. Seven years ago. So uh, seven yeah, years. Ago, I know. So. Has it been yeah. seven years? Oh my yeah. god! You guys, have had, you guys have had time. Wow. You guys have had time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, have you seen that video of Troy Baker, who you mentioned as an actor? It's great to. To, watch, to, to experience The Last of Us. And The Last mm-hmm. of Us is honestly a great example of acting in video games. Their performances are conveyed in such, in such like, great detail that as an actor, I'm sure you can't help but appreciate how, how the game developers let the actors work the story through yeah. their craft, right? Uh, fully Have realized, you seen that? You know? Yeah. Fully realized. Sorry, I, I, I forgot to ask my question. Have you seen that video of, of when they were doing that last scene of the first Last of Us, where they're at the where they at the Firefly bla- base and oh. Ellie is on the table, and yeah. and the director made the one of the fe- I forget the 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 the, the, the lead Firefly uh, lady improvise. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And then uh, yeah, Marlene. That? Where, Marlene. Where, yeah. Marlene. Marlene. Yeah. Marlene. Where he yeah. where he tells Marlene to improvise doesn't tell mm-hmm. anyone. I think doesn't tell anyone else but Troy Baker because Troy Baker wasn't satisfied with his performance and he decided yeah. to tell Marlene the, the the actress playing Marlene to turn it into a musical and see how Troy Baker would react. Wow, man. That I haven't seen. Okay, yeah, that it, that I have to watch, okay? I I, yeah, I saw the see that. I saw the mocap uh I saw the mocap uh feature uh, footage. You know, I saw yeah. I saw the mocap footage of the first game, and I I love I love Troy Baker. I love his voice and the fact that he can actually you know act and fully realize characters. You know, he's voiced so many beloved characters in the in the for the PlayStation Four, for the PlayStation Three, and you know, seeing him do his thing with with his entire body, it's like oh my god! But this I gotta see. I gotta I gotta I gotta uh, check that. Yeah, out. you guys you guys should totally. Have you seen that, Tanya? No, not yet, not yet. It's, I didn't um, even know about it. It's, it's, 
I think the title is like alternate ending for The Last of Us 2. So oh you think oh, even, right. even the video, sorry, I spoiled it for you. Even even the video you think they made like this decision too. Let's film this alternate ending just in case. But yeah. but they workshopped it and then of course Troy Baker was an absolute pro and he yeah. he he ran with it and it was amazing. So you yeah, guys should def- yeah. definitely check that out. <clears throat> yeah. I love yeah. those guys. So man. stories of both these games are amazing, but a game isn't a game with just a story alone, right? If it's if it's five hours of a cutscene, then it's it's just a it's just a CG movie. One of the main things we we look for in a video game is, of course, really great gameplay, and both of these games definitely deliver um, in that respect, in my opinion. Let's start with Reb this time. Um, what what is it about the gameplay of Last of Us that you like, and how do you, both of these games actually, Ghost of Tsushima and Last of Us, they both. Um, sort of give you different ways to play them, right? You can, you can do it with stealth, you can do it with, with, with brute force. You can, you can, based on what difficulty setting you choose, you can, you can alter your experience and, and the play style that it necessitates. What is it about the gameplay of The Last of Us that you enjoy and how do you like playing the game? I, I love that question because my favorite, um, my favorite style of playing anyway in any game is the sneaker. I, I sneak mm-hmm. a lot. And uh, Ellie, okay, I think the... Yes, Abangers. exactly. Abangers. <laughs> Counter-Strike. Woohoo! Abangers forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I love using the bow uh, in the game. And I, I love that it just gives you so many options. You have a limited amount of weapons, of course. Understandably, you have the pistol, the bolt-action rifle, the revolver, the shotgun, the silenced SMG, and the bow. And... And the bottles that you can pick up, and the bricks that you can pick up. I'm probably the stingiest player in the in the history of The Last of Us. As in, I don't use bullets. <laughs> I remember the first time I played The Last of Us. I finished the game. I had full everything. I had <laughs> I had maxed out inventory, and it was it was in hard mode. So you can own, already imagine how hard it was for me to get yeah. there. And it's just I I I I wanted to put myself in their shoes. Like I would save bullets, you know, for for the for the absolute moment that I need it. I love the fact that this game is so I, I know it's a linear story. It will bring you somewhere. You have no choice in the matter. But you have uh the choice on how to play it, how you're gonna play it. And I think again it's the actor in me. I, I saw Ellie as such a as such a crafty character, you know, because she's not muscular or anything. She she will use her the environment to her advantage. She will use her smarts. She will use her wits. She will use everything. Uh, she she's so scrappy that um, you know it it just makes sense to sneak. So that's the kind of gameplay that I have uh, with Ellie. And the gameplay of of The Last of Us Two is so <clears throat> is so cool and is so diverse. Uh, like you can hide from the brush and then all of a sudden you know just stab them in the face you know and and <laughs> I, I just love that and then you, you shoot them with a bow and there's this oh my god okay there there's this new mechanic that they put in the game the dogs oh my right. god it's it's the worst and you're trying to sneak and if the dogs start smelling you okay you you have to keep moving around right and mm-hmm. I love dogs, so it, it, sometimes you are forced to kill them, and I, I, I hate that. Sometimes I had to replay moments where I killed the dog. I'm like, no, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to make sure I don't kill the dog. And, yeah. you know, it, just <clears throat> I, that. I'm, that sure, I, I'm, sure it, I'm sure it was even worse for you. You said it was the worst, but I'm sure it was even worse for you. Because, okay, we said no spoilers, but you said... Uh, about, about the new mechanics that they introduced yeah. into the game, uh, a, a focus that, that Naughty Dog placed on the enemies that you fight in the game is that they have names, right? Oh, yeah. They so, named I mean, the dogs, too. <laughs> the dogs. I'm like, don't give it a name. You know? Bear. <laughs> oh, bear. I, bear. Oh, my God. Bear. And, and Alice, I think. Bear and yeah, Alice. Yeah, Bear and Alice. Mistaken. And then they have the my favorite feature of the game, which is the guitar practice. And, and you know, as a, as a person who plays guitar, you know, I, I ended up having to record myself singing a lot of songs, with jamming with Ellie. And uh, uh, fun fact, uh, Ellie Buendia actually dropped by one of my streams. Uh-huh. And uh, <laughs> the audience members were like, oh, your twin is in the game. And I, was, I didn't get it until, oh my God. And... Uh, Thank God, thank God he didn't drop by the part where I'm singing one of his songs. So, 
Yeah, but the brilliant gameplay is it, it, it just shows you how brilliant the gameplay is because you just have full control as as, as the player uh, even if you have a particular story that you're heading to, you know, you you play it how you want with the arsenal that you have and yeah, you know, it it's just it it has the it, it, they developed it, they personalized it more from the first uh Last of Us I, I love the first Last of Us. Don't get me wrong, but the the advantage that you have now is that they they it feels it feels it's it's almost the same equipment, but it feels different, uh, and that's what I love about it. So would you say they did uh, because that's always with these with these post apocalyptic survival slash horror games, right? It's always about getting the player to experience. Like what it is to live in a world that's like that. We're getting probably like I don't know, ten percent of that experience given how the world is right now. <laughs> but, but I mean, it's it's freaky, right? I mean, oh, you, yeah. you, when you watch the fir- when you play the first Last of Us, it's about this fungus that's spreading, and you're like, oh, yeah, God, is that yeah. where we're heading. Yeah. But like, does it man. does it do does the sequel do do a better job in your opinion of putting? Yeah. The player into that mode of like survival. It's it's actually a the difficulty mode in the game, right? Is survivor, I believe. Does the would you say the experience like really put you into the shoes of someone who needs to like survive basically this yeah. hellish world? Mm-hmm, absolutely, one hundred percent. Because even if you know you start off uh, again, it, it, this is not a spoiler because this is actually the beginning of the game. You know, you you at the end of the Last of Us one, you end up going to a settlement, which is Jackson, uh, and you know you come from a place where there's an established community. You have a you know, you know you have supplies and all that, but still, when you go out there, when you do a supply run or something like that, <clears throat> you really have to think about each and every move and each and every resource, and uh, especially when you play it in hard mode, you know it's harder to find bullets, for example. It's harder to find supplies. It's harder to find um uh crafting materials so I, I I think I think it does a great job of of that to be honest so yeah okay that's great thank you for that Reb Tanya what is it about the gameplay of of Ghost of Tsushima clearly it's very different from the last of us there there are no uh zombies in yeah. Ghost of Tsushima you have Mongols though that's a spoiler <laughs> You have Mongols, yes. Um, Zombie but, Mongols would uh, be cool, though. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, hey, you, you never know. That that new update looks cool. Um, so, what is it about about playing a uh, samurai who eventually becomes a ninja? Mm. What what is it about that that you enjoy? What about the gameplay uh, mechanics of Ghost of Tsushima appeal to you? Mm-hmm. And it being in an open world where you can explore Japan and basically be a samurai in the 13th century in Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, what, do you, what did you enjoy about it? So like, while you do have the option, like the way you press triangle, if you want to stand off, whenever there are enemies around, like at some point in the game, you really are forced to sneak up on enemies and strike them without them knowing uh, you're there, which is actually like one of my favorite features of the game. It's called Chain Assassinate. <laughs> I love that part. Yeah, especially when you're like on, on the, uh, a rooftop, then you just kind of jump down and then stab them from behind like one enemy after another. <laughs> it's really cool. It's my favorite. <laughs> anyway, so apart from the standoffs and fighting with your katana, you know, fighting the honorable way, you're also um, presented with these bunch of other weapons, right? The ghost weapons. Mm-hmm. Like you have the kunai, um, smoke bombs, uh, sticky bombs, firecrackers, wind chimes, which like are exactly just that. You throw them somewhere to distract your enemies, and you know uh, it's really cool because ang daming there are so many ghost weapons you can choose from, and you can just simply switch from one to another. And oh my gosh, they have the bow and arrow too, the the long bow which is uh, slower but it deals greater damage. Then the half bow, which is um, the opposite of the, uh, of the long bow. And then you have the flaming arrows. And okay, full disclosure, I have really, really bad aim in general. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Reb knows this. He's, see, he's seen me play shooter games. I do so... Yeah. I, I panic. I panic. So like my aim is everywhere. I, there is no aim. <laughs> so I do so much better with melee weapons. Because there's really not much thinking and you you kind of just smash the buttons and that's it. It's fun. 
<laughs> but, Although um, in Ghost of Tsushima there are the stances, right? Yes, exactly. I'm, I'm gonna get to that. So, you find these ghost weapons, right? They, they work in your favor. You really can't avoid fighting with these weapons and using ghost tactics. So, you really don't have a choice and fight the dishonorable way. And, um, I mean, you can try sticking to the katana, right? Diba? And fighting everyone head-on, stand-off. But seriously, what's, the, not the, what's best, the fun in that? The uh, that's <laughs> not the point of the game. <laughs> it's a sign so you can, you know, integrate those weapons with your, uh, alongside your katana as your, as your main weapon. And then, you can even choose how you look from top to bottom, right? Including like a skin for your katana, which mm -hmm. is, uh, is really cool. It's it's like the dressing up, a uh, dressing up part of the open world game. Um, I probably spent more time dressing up my character. <laughs> yeah, mix matching stuff. Actually fighting enemies. <laughs> exactly. That's um, <laughs> you're gonna need um, flowers and so you know when when you see flowers and bamboo supplies, iron, you just keep looting and uh, these are pretty much like the only items you can loot, unlike. Unlike in Skyrim, diba? where where you can steal like a wooden plate <laughs> and you get arrested for it if no you reason. get caught. <laughs> <Interrupt someone's laughs> dinner. There's no Sorry, limit. Can I just say something about Skyrim? I've seen Tanya play Skyrim. <laughs> we tried this trick where we pick up the basket, the basket and we put, put it, it over, over the, the shopkeeper's head. head. And then you steal all his stuff and he doesn't, he doesn't see. see. He doesn't see anything. <laughs> it's it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say that. <laughs> so yeah, you, you don't naman steal anything from, from this game. Um, there's no limit also to your carrying capacity for supplies and uh, raw materials, which is great because I love looting. Like, I actually loot first before I, I save hostages. Or like in the middle of a fight, I press R2 to like get supplies. <laughs> Um, I love how revealing this has been about about you, Tang. You, about my game, favorite. <laughs> my priority. About the game is stabbing people in the back, looting <laughs> people before saving them. Exactly. Yeah, I, I loot. I loot before saving civilians because if I don't loot, it's just gonna go right into a cutscene, right? And then everything's gone. You can't loot anymore except for supplies. Um, and of course, like you know, with other uh, RPG, well, uh, open world RPGs, you have the technique points which um, you can spend depending on your personal play style. Uh, I usually, like to Rev, I usually go for maximum sneak and fastest health regen. <laughs> so I want to be invincible. <laughs> and I'm always, I <laughs> know, eh, close combat. Like, I can't aim nga eh, so, diba? So I, I, <laughs> I stab them like, really close. <laughs> um, and then uh, you, can, you can spend those technique points on combat styles. Um, you learn stances, like what you were saying earlier, but there are four, um, water, stone, wind, and moon. Like, it depends on what kind of enemy you're fighting. Like, the stone, the stone stance is effective against uh, swordsmen. And uh, mm. these technique points also let you uh, learn a series of moves, which makes parrying with enemies a more authentic experience you can anticipate the next move of the enemy and kind of like be able to gauge how you want to counter attack. Because you can see, it, it feels very um, organic. Um, like, because as you progress into the game, diba, it's not just square for light attack or triangle for heavy attack. However you want to spend those technique points, there are specific defensive and evasive moves you get to learn, which makes it like a, 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 an organic parrying experience. Like, it's not just your regular arcade fighting game button na gumagaling ka lang. <laughs> it really feels like you're fighting with someone. So, so what I get from, what, from how you're talking about the game, how you describe mm -hmm. it, is you enjoy the freedom that it provides you, right? Yes, yes. And, and freedom is, is something that, like you mentioned, uh, like you mentioned that you, you, you're, is your favorite. Um, it, freedom is something that an open world game really provides mm -hmm, as an mm -hmm. experience for the player, right? And I want to ask you something. I probably know the question. That there's this test that you have to apply to open world games. Where I forget, he called it something. I forget what it's called. But basically, if you're, if you're just roaming around, the, the, the sign of a good open world game is if you get distracted by 
random things that you weren't paying attention to and they lead you down all these weird paths that and then you discover like, locations Wait, what was i doing again yeah exactly. yeah exactly like i i so, that so did you me. experience that play yes you? like being an open world mm-hmm. game sucker punch did a super amazing job in giving so much attention to detail now it's sad that you don't get nga to loot certain things like furniture <laughs> or little things like <laughs> like cups and something because it, it's so detailed you just want to get it like you know, in Skyrim or Fallout 4 so yeah and I, I I find myself exploring um um I put a lot I I spent a lot of time because because the game the, the attention they put into the details was remarkable that I spent a lot of a lot of time just exploring to discover locations without any tracked quest. As in, well, I, I didn't have any activated quests. I would just roam around. And that was fun. That was really fun. Which I think makes it a really great open world game. Because you can just get lost in it. Yeah, you can, get, you can just get lost in, yeah. the, in the wilderness. Um, there was, I, I saw something about how it's, they, the developers really looked into Shinto and how that put such an emphasis on nature and they wanted that to be a big part of the game is like just exploring and being in nature and appreciating what 13th century Japan looked like, right? I have to say like my personal favorite are the onsens or the hot springs. Like you go there to regenerate <laughs> now. And then, you, know, you think about certain things, you think about yeah. like the, the embrace of a woman. <laughs> <laughs> the relaxing haiku sessions. Yeah, relaxing haiku so, sessions. Yeah, because like I love I love yeah. onsen. It's one of my favorite things to do when I'm in Japan. What what is it about I I know there there are like these two schools of thought, right, when it comes to games. It's like some people are tired of the triple A look. Where it has to look photo real and and it has to be like beautiful graphics and amazing shaders and like these these really expressive character faces and stuff. But but you you both you love these games. Um, and so what is it about like just just them technologically, graphics wise, and just the scope of these games that 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 makes you really appreciate them? Let's go with Ghost of Tsushima first. I I have nothing to say against that because okay i'm gonna be completely honest and i'm probably gonna get haters for this or hate mail if that's still uso but i gave up on i oh my god i can't believe i'm saying this out loud i gave up on uh breath of the wild because it wasn't hyper realistic it's really something i like like my favorite games are skyrim and and this one ghost of tsushima um fallout 4 uh witcher so, it, I can't complain. It's, it's everything I've ever wanted in a game. It has everything I've ever wanted. Yeah, and I think it's a credit to them that I, I feel like it hasn't been stated as much. But you know how there's just so many games these days and, and you, there, there, there are too many games to consume at this point. And mm-hmm. for, a lot of, for a lot of really, really, really hardcore gamers, um, they can't help but just like um, sort of plow through games and not really experience them, right? Mm, yeah. Because you're so used to games, you just play it and you you, you skip cutscenes and skip. Yeah, yeah. And stuff. You just go through the story, but, the main story. Yeah. But Sushima, I I feel you will agree. It just just the sheer beauty and and scope of it makes you want to take your time. Yeah, yeah. And it's not rush through game. the story exactly. Yeah. You don't want it to end. All right, that's amazing. <laughs> you, you, you really don't. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. All right. Uh, as much as we want to keep gushing about this game, we have to talk about The Last of Us 2 as well. So, Reb, uh, like, like I mentioned earlier, I honestly have, as much as I, as I was gushing about how Sucker Punch created uh, 13th century Japan for Ghost of Tsushima, there's this fascination we have with post-apocalyptic stuff, right? And... Um, me personally, I feel like uh, uh, as a Scorpio, apparently, like Scorpios would 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 like enjoy being in a post-apocalyptic setting because you enjoy the the lack of of a structured society and because you have to like you have to like you know just make your own rules and stuff like that. I don't know, but there's a certain beauty to how post-apocalyptic settings are artistically rendered. Right? It's why it's such an enduring genre. So what yeah. is it about the setting of The Last of Us you feel 
was beautifully done by Naughty Dog. Like, how did they bring out the beauty in such a bleak and grim setting? It well for me, it 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 kind of reminds me of pictures when I saw uh, the pictures of whenever I see the pictures of Chernobyl. You know, you you just it looks like a ghost town. It it looks like it was lived in before. It may have had great memories, which is also a very a really cool feature of the game. They leave letters behind in certain places where you can read about what happened in that place. You know, and it's so alive. Uh, it it it's so ironic. Uh, it, it, the, ironic, the, the, yes. The, yeah. It's so ironic. It's it's so it, it's so full of life, and yet there's so much death that surrounds the the locations in in Seattle and. You know, it's just so immersive. Uh, the game is so immersive to the point that you can't f- help but feel that you are really living in that world. And it makes, it tickles your your imagination. What if, how would I survive in this world? You know, and then and right. then it, it just gives you that. And not to mention, you know, the, the physics of, of, of the environment, the, the snow physics. Um, and it just shows you the, the the way the snow would would be uh would the way you know, the body of the character would leave traces in the snow you know these things and what what would it be like if it was winter in a post apocalyptic world what would it be like if there was a swamp in a post apocalyptic world you know seattle it rains a lot in seattle um which means in a post apocalyptic world it would be flooding all the time now so you know you, you just see the overgrowth you see it it's so gritty and and so it's very visceral to to the point that you can't help but really be immersed 100 percent. and you know you have the great story to boot right and yeah and and it, there's also the the workbench mechanics that they uh, updated you know you I, it's tiny but it's so impressive how if you change the recoil on a gun they actually change the butt of the rifle you know d- these things and uh if they change the accuracy the the Magnum, the, the, the 38, 38 caliber gun, you get a longer barrel. You know, it's just these things that Naughty Dog uh, gave. And I love Ghost of Tsushima, don't get me wrong. It's one of the most beautiful games I have ever played. It's one of the most beautiful, most realized worlds that I have ever been uh, immersed, that I have ever seen in any game and that I've ever experienced. And it's, there's some, like you said, you know, there's something about The, the Last of Us too that is, it's so fascinating and it just makes you qu- it makes you ask the question what if you know and would it really look like this and it's not far off it can look like this it can end up looking like a war zone and looking like there were people here once upon a time you know and yeah it it that's how good the physics are and that's how good the graphics are for the game i think wow we we got we wow we got so deep there man i know I <laughs> Yeah. No, but that, that I, I love that you went there. I love that you that you waxed rhapsodic on on <laughs> on how yeah. that game in particular like sort of makes you think because that's that's another credit to video games as a medium, right? It's it's they tell stories and what's the point of stories if not to like elevate the human condition and make us better, really? Yep. At the end of the day, right? Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate you guys for dropping by. Uh, I, I I couldn't have I couldn't have uh, thought of anyone else to talk about video games with on something like this um, for the first few episodes. So thank you so much. Uh, can you guys let us know uh, where can people find you? What what projects are you up to these days? Is there anything you want to promote? Let us know right now. Hi, you guys. Please do follow me on Facebook. I game there occasionally. Right now, I'm busy with something. But um, I do game on Facebook. That's fb.gg slash Miss Tanya Manalang. And I also game on Twitch. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Miss Tanya Manalang. And please do check out my little business <laughs> where I customize Funko Pops. It's called Ala Pop Up on Instagram. And um, just check it out. I do customize um, Funko Pops personalize them. I'm not saying this because Tanya's my friend, but these are some of the best looking custom Funkos I've ever seen, honestly. I'm not oh, a Funko Pop guy. Yeah. I only collect them. But it honestly looks amazing, Tang. Like just in terms of the paint, the finish alone, it looks like it's been it's been made in a factory. Oh, thank it, you. Uh, your work is amazing. Thank you, thank you. Right. Rebeba. And I'm not just saying this as because I'm Tanya's boyfriend, but I agree with everything you just said. No, it's 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 beautiful. And 
Uh, again, you can follow her there on Alapapap if for inquiries. Uh, also, Tanya and I share a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash RebXTanya. And we also share a Kumu channel if you just want to hang out with us on our live streams. It's uh, RebXTanya on Kumu. I also play a lot of video games. I stream on Facebook Gaming, fb.gg slash RebRangerGaming. And I also stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash RebRanger. So yeah, we hope to hang out with you guys very, very soon. Let's talk about video games. Let's geek out over anything. Let's uh, chat. Because... Let's go on just chatting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on you know, let's, that's fun too. Let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about life and life vis a vis video games. Vis a vis. Yeah, I it's uh, I, I'm so happy to see you, Beebs. Uh, I'm I'm really glad to see you doing doing well and yeah. you know talking video Thanks, games. Geeking out, out man. I know I know how much you yeah. love these things and I'm so happy that you get yeah, to do I miss them. you guys, dude. Yeah, man. Miss yep. you, miss you. Thanks so All much, right. man. Thank you. Yeah, man. Hey, real quick before we let you guys go, um I just want to try to establish this for the show. Um can you each give us a recommendation of a game that you're playing right now besides the games that we talked about that you really recommend people check out? <laughs> okay. You go first. Good. Me? <laughs> Even if it's like a mobile game or something, anything, any any game that you that you've played recently. This is the very first time I'm playing it. I'm I'm a I call myself a fake retro gamer, not because I play <laughs> old games. I play games that were released like two, three years ago, and then I play them for the very first time now. Because you know, <laughs> of work and all of that. Oh my god, Detroit Become Human. Uh, oh, okay. It's a great game. Uh, uh, dude, it's 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 dude, so good. Dude, Heavy Rain is one of our landmark oh, yeah. gaming experiences. Yeah, dude. Oh yeah, my man. gosh! I remember I played it at your condo. Yeah. Yeah, and we went to Gab's house. Remember, we went to yeah. G- Gab's house to play it together. Yeah, play it, to play it. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah. So that Quantic Dream. Uh, and uh, uh, I would say that, and uh, probably I, 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 I'm a big fan of. I, I, I don't like battle royale games, but I'm trying to get better at them. So. I play Call of Duty Warzone as well. So please don't cheat. Stop stop it, cheaters. Yeah, you oh, make it a so lot many. less fun. There's so for many, people. you know. Yeah, man. So bad. It's too many cheaters. So bad. Tanya, how about you? All right, um, Tanya. Me, uh, Fallout 4. Play Fallout 4. <laughs> play. <laughs> it doesn't get old. Doesn't and uh, get old. okay, I mean, I know everyone's playing it, but if you you can't get your hands on a Switch, but you can like you can financially get your hands on a Switch. Play Animal Crossing. It's really fun. It's not over. It's it's really relaxing. I love it. You guys are so you guys you guys are so funny with these old games that you play because <laughs> these two whenever it wasn't their show backstage they they would be on their switches playing Skyrim. Oh my! I'm like Bebo would hide my like, switch. Okay, and I would go crazy <laughs> looking for because it because I because I'd watch you guys playing Skyrim and I'm like, is it 2012? <laughs> I'm just and I <laughs> I'm just looting things. <laughs> And she, they're just they're just putting plates on top of people's heads and robbing them. You know what? You guys, I love you. Thank you so much. Love you, buddy. So much love fun. you, babes. Take care. See you Take soon. Take care, bud. See ya, man. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so before we get started with the last segment of this episode, we have a very special clip from a video game publisher about something that is coming out real soon. I have no idea what this is, so I'm quite excited. Let's see what this is. Nate, Eloy, Ratchet, Pitbulls. Maybe a PlayStation involved thing? Yeah. Hello, Surfer <laughs> I'm here to hijack your show. Hindi ba sila na nang-connect sa'yo? Ako na new host ng Unblockable. Whatever. Char! He's one of those people that I consider anak ng BB Powder. Alam niyo ba yun? <laughs> yung mga anak ng BB Powder, sila yung mga pagkagising pa lang, o kaya kahit pinawisan lang, o kaya kahit mga walang ligo, powderan mo lang, ready na silang mag-pictorial. Avengers! <laughs> People smash! <laughs> no, 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 uh, we're not doing that today. No, 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 no smashing, no Bebo smash. No Bebo, huh? Bebo birthday. <laughs> smash! No, 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 Bebo birthday. Bebo birthday. Okay, Bebo birthday. Yes, that's right, that's right. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday. <laughs> Does he have an accent? <laughs> What's up, Bebo Reyes? This is your oh! amigo, Mr. Philippine Wrestling, Jake DeLeon, and I'm just here to wish you a very Gee, happy oh. birthday, and I wanted to congratulate you on your new show, Unblockable. <laughs> I know you will kill it anywhere you go and whatever you do, so I'm just here to wish you a happy birthday. Have a great show. Take care, and God bless, amigo. See ya. Thank you, brother. One of the few intelligent people I know na masarap na ngang tingnan, <laughs> masarap ang pakinggan. Diba? Happiest birthday, Bebo, Keanu Reeves of the Philippines. I wish you all the best um, for your birthday. I wish all the good things for your heart, for your career, um, for your family. I want to say thank you for um, our friendship, for always entertaining me backstage in the Heb, and for being <laughs> one of the coolest people I know. I wish you all the best. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Beavs! Yeah. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our little skit. Of course. <laughs> Have a good one, man. Have a Thank great you. one. Thank you. Everybody. You know, stay healthy, stay safe. Yeah. <laughs> the usual. The usual. Stay safe, buddy. Happy birthday, Beavs! Happy, happy birthday! Just wanted to drop by, surprise you, and of course, congratulate you for your new show, Unblockable. I am so Thank proud you. of you, and I'm so happy the Connect family decided to get you on this show because you deserve it. You deserve all the blessings coming your way. And um, I'm sure they also recognize, and I'm, I hope more people will recognize that you as a person, as an artist, as a performer, go over and beyond in every project that you do. And I just want to say that I am so proud of you. You know how much I love you. You know how much I support you in everything. I won't, I won't steal your show from you. <laughs> Love you, Beams! I hope you have the best day. I really sincerely hope you have the best birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Kaya naman, I am just so proud and I'm just excited. And Titi I'm went like super, super show speed that you have for a right second. Now. I'm just... And again. The That's okay. That I know what he's saying. Finally getting all Love you, the attention and all the recognition that you rightfully deserve now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and speaking of, mga bagay na binigay mo. Yay, yeah. Extra rice. No extra rice. And let's celebrate this birthday of yours, na magkakasama. Keep safe and again congratulations to this new show. I'm very very sure ay mahal na mahal mo at katulad ng lahat ng mga minamahal mo, iingatan mo itong show na to. Hashtag Guapo Grenade. <laughs> That's it. Oh, thank you. I said I wouldn't cut but I, I, have, I think I have to cut right now. Alright, so there you go. Thank you so much again to Tanya and Reb for joining us today. Uh, I talk about that type of geekery with those guys all the time, so that was no different than any other time we'd hang out. It was fun to get their insights on these two amazing games, but the unenviable task of choosing between the two of them falls upon me. At least when it comes to which is going to win Game of the Year this year, in my opinion. Uh, I, I feel like... And this is going to be this is going to be a little I don't know it's kind of like a it's, it sucks to say but I honestly feel like The Last of Us 2 if it wins game of the year a lot of people are going to boo-boo that even though I, I so up front I haven't played both of them I only played and finished Ghost of Tsushima but I know the entire story of The Last of Us 2 I I, want, I know I knew I wanted to know the story despite uh, not being driven to actually play the game myself I feel like there's just going to be this huge negative reaction if that wins Game of the Year. And uh, so, in my opinion, Ghost of Tsushima is going to win Game of the Year this year. Also because Sucker Punch has has garnered so much goodwill in terms of the fan base because of the post-launch content. They recently released an update with a multiplayer, a whole new multiplayer mode, and even more content into the game, including New Game Plus, completely for free. So. A game that was already so well received and critically acclaimed, they just decided they wanted to give us more content for absolutely no charge whatsoever, putting so many other publishers and developers to shame. And in that regard, because of that, I do think if it's going to come down to those two games, we don't know what else might be nominated, I do feel that it would go to, the, to Ghost of Tsushima 
if it came down to those two game of the year 2020 so there you go ghost of tsushima is my pick for game of the year 2020. <laughs> And there you have it. Thank you so much for joining us, you guys. Be sure to tune in next week, Wednesday, November 18, as we tackle an absolute MMORPG darling, at least when it comes to our neck of the woods, Ragnarok Online, with our special guests, Silicon Peto and Glocko. Thank you so much, Connect. Best cake ever, I love it! Scott Pilgrim! It's my favorite! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs>